Well, as they say, shots fired. Eon fires the first shots in the war on solar export tariffs. So what's happened? Eon has slashed their export payments for their solar customers from 16 and a half pence per kilowatt hour down to just six pence for the vast majority of customers. This is a potential start of a major shift in the UK solar economics. So if you're a solar export customer, even if you're not an Eon customer, you need to know about this. So what's happening? Well, just a couple of days ago, Eon updated their website and they introduced what they call four smart export guarantee uh, tariffs. Now, one of the four is purely for business customers. So we're gonna ignore that one for now. Um, if you are a business customer, head over to the Eon website, you can get all the details there. But instead of saying, you know, we will take your solar export and we'll pay you, I believe it was 16 and a half pence per kilowatt hour. What they're now saying is we have three options. And those three options are as follows. There is a premium rate that you can get for 17 and a half pence per kilowatt hour. However, you must have bought your solar and battery solution from Eon, and you must have bought it after the 10th of November, so effectively three days ago. So that excludes all existing solar customers who haven't had their system from Eon and the very small amount of customers who have had their system installed since the 10th of November 2025, they can get a 17 and a half pence uh, tariff. Everybody else is excluded. You can't get that. So then there are two other options. There is a 13 pence option. Now you might think, well, that sounds not too bad if we come down from 16 pence to 13 pence. But you can only get the 13 pence if you're not on a smart tariff. And it specifically says not available to next drive customers. So that's customers that have an EV and are using the smart tariff to charge their EV at lower rates overnight, they are excluded from the 13 pence tariff. And that means that the vast majority of customers are gonna be placed onto the six pence per kilowatt hour tariff. Now, personally, I think this is insane because what they're effectively doing is saying to all of their existing customers, we don't care about your installations, we don't want your solar energy. We would rather you self-consume it than send it to us. But what it's also doing is locking in those customers that do buy their solar from these companies uh, to get that top rate because they're never going to leave. Because if by leaving it means that they have to lose their export rate to go to like a six pence per kilowatt hour rate, they're never going to do it. So companies like Eon are locking in their customers into these closed ecosystems. And it's not just Eon. If you go and look on the EDF website, EDF have a very high rate at 24 pence per kilowatt hour. But guess what? It's only available to customers who buy their solar and batteries through EDF. So what we're starting to see is these customers closing the ecosystem. We don't want people from outside the ecosystem. We want everyone locked in. We want a nice walled garden and we want you to stay inside it. And if you don't, we're going to penalize you. So why is all this happening? We're at the end of the summer. Um, there's not going to be a huge amount of solar export over the winter period. So why now? Well, my personal opinion is they've been studying the data. They've been looking at how much money they've been paying out for solar export in what has been a very good year for solar export. And they're starting to realize that they're giving away too much money. What we're starting to see is that by fixing a rate at 15 or 16 and a half pence per kilowatt hour, that there are, have been days this summer where there has been an excess of export into the network, which they have to pay their customers for, and the wholesale price of that energy has dropped below that. So they're actually losing money by paying for all of this solar export. And these are energy companies. Remember, they don't like to lose money. They want to make money no matter what happens. So therefore, the simplest way to do this is to stop you sending them energy. Now, I may be conflating two things here, but just a couple of days ago, there was an article put out by SSE uh, in The Telegraph. Um, I will put a link to it in the description below. 
in that article, the CEO of SSE said that they were effectively wasting about 25% of the wind energy that they were generating due to constraints and curtailments on the national grid. That basically meant there wasn't capacity in the grid for all the energy they were generating, therefore it was going to waste. And when they have to shut down the wind turbines, those costs get passed on to consumers. So they're really doing us a favour by saying, you know, we need to make capacity on the grid so we can, we can bring our renewable energy so that we don't have to charge you for it. They're saying this curtailment is now at record levels. It's happening more and more and more. So we need to make capacity on the grid for this excess of wind energy that these companies have. Now, this coupled with the timing of these smart export guarantee cuts, I may be conflating things, but it just seems to fit in, certainly in my mind. So why is this all happening? Well, what we're starting to see is the energy companies are realizing that by paying you a fixed rate at 16 or 15 pence per kilowatt hour, they're actually doing themselves a disservice because they can't bring the energy that they're buying from their, from their wind farms, their, their energy generation arms, they can't bring that into the grid to supply because there just isn't the capacity. The easiest thing to do is to push you out of the mix and bring more of their own capacity in. The way they do that is they make it less and less attractive for you to export energy to the grid. We lower those export payments to the point where you say, actually, I'm going to store this energy in batteries and I'm going to use it myself. And I think ultimately that's what they want to happen. They want you to be able to take that energy, store it in a battery, charge your EVs from it, run your house and not import as much energy from the grid. And that gives them more capacity then for the rest of their generation. They don't have to shut down their wind turbines or uh, ask the solar farms to curtail what they're sending into the grid. Now, the question is, is we've seen this already from E.ON. Um, EDF have a similar structure already in place. Will we see Octopus, SSE, Ovo, Centrica and all others follow? I think it's very likely. Now, we saw a move from Octopus uh, in the last year where they changed the terms and conditions of their export contracts that says the rate is now variable. Um, they promised they would give us plenty of notice if they needed to change that rate, but they've already set the stage for this to be able to happen. And I think this trend may spread. It's not guaranteed, but I think it will. But in the short term, I think what you're going to see is a lot of customers who are certainly with Eon today, who are potentially seeing losing you know, 10 and a half pence per kilowatt hour, suddenly saying, I need to move. And companies that are still paying reasonable rates for their export are going to see a number of customers move across to them. So what does this mean for us as owners? Well, um, expect lower export rates industry-wide. Certainly as we get into the generation season next spring and summer, um, I'd be very surprised if the current rates of about 15 pence per kilowatt hour are maintained through the new year. I would expect to see early January, the other companies start to follow suit. The one advantage of this, it means that your batteries that you have in your house are gonna become more valuable. And we're probably gonna see a lot of customers who are gonna say, well, actually, if I can't export my energy and make, a, uh, make some money from it, I'm going to invest in a larger battery solution so I can store more of it and I can self-consume it. And we're going to see people not importing energy from things like Octopus Intelligent Go to charge their EVs. They will trickle charge their EVs with all of that excess solar during the day, store it in the car um, rather than export it to the grid and get paid for it. Now, I think this is going to cause a lot of frustration amongst customers, especially those people that invested in solar because they looked at the rates that were available and said, that makes financial sense to me. And with these new rates, it may not make financial sense. People might look at it and say, you know, my repayment period has gone from six to eight years, maybe to nine to 10 years. Now, we've always said you shouldn't base your, your financial models on a guarantee that the export payment will always be there at current rate. But I think a lot of people actually did make that assumption. So what can you do next? Well, really, all you can do is check your rates with your supplier. Um, if you are an Eon customer, um, I would certainly look at moving because they're making it more and more unpalatable to have an EV and solar. 
that that one line in that it says you can't have this rate if you're on Eon Next Drive, I think is a real slap in the face to a lot of customers because they're doing the right thing. They're trying to not have so much of a dependency on the grid. They've installed solar and batteries. They've got an EV. And now the energy companies are going, ah, no, nah, we think you need to pay us more money. Consider your battery economics. If you've got enough capacity that you can store everything that you were exporting last summer, um, if you can store that and self-consume it, then that makes sense. I know if the rates drop to, let's say, six pence um, next summer, that both of my zappies will be running all summer long, and I will be putting as much energy into the car batteries as I possibly can. Um, we'll be running our hot tub exclusively off of solar, and all of the things that we, we have in our house that consume energy, rather than me exporting all that energy, we will be self-consuming it. So please, please, please go and review your import tariffs and see what the impact is going to be on you. Anyway, that's it for today's video. I hope you found this informative. If you do have any questions, do hit me up in the comments below. And if I'm lucky, I will see you back here real soon for another video. Take care.